When I graduated from engineering school, I had a dream to have a completely net zero house. Now we've been in our dream house now for two years and how are we doing? Pretty good. The main house has solar batteries, we're getting there. But the office was always a problem because there wasn't any space for a new panel and batteries and stuff. Now if you remember, we had the Smart Home Panel 1 from EcoFlow previously, but there wasn't really enough battery space before. So we did a thing. We built out this entire back to the office. We have room for all of those things. Now we're not done just yet, but this three part video series, we're going to walk you through how we're going to have space for batteries, put solar on the roof, do some testing and get this place net zero. It all starts with the EcoFlow Smart Home Panel 2. Here it is right here. Now, as we mentioned, we have the Smart Home Panel 1. Everything's turned off now, but we used to have it installed right here on this little pop-out. That's all the space we had in the past, right here. But now, as you can see, we have a ton of room. The batteries are gonna go over here and we're gonna have a new panel. One thing that's different now is this will replace both of these, the service panel and this add-on. Because previously they had relays in the Smart Home Panel 1. The new one has full breakers right in here. The relays are all built in. It's all pretty nice and tidy. So in this episode, let's get this installed, get started. And over the course of the next three, let's make this business entirely net zero. I'm Ricky, and this is 2 DaVinci. Expectations is the key to happiness. We knew this is going to be a big project, all in the name of this, the Smart Home Panel 2 from EcoFlow. But we knew this is going to be a big project, and it turned out to be a big project. Just look around. This was all in the name of getting space to put this in, add batteries, have a place for the water heater and everything else. Previously, that little closet we had just didn't have enough room, and it wasn't up to modern code having separation between the water heater and the electrical panel. It was all just kind of a mess. And now, well, we have that space to do that. Plus, above us, we now have six times 33 feet of extra solar space, which we're gonna max out. What was up, bud? We're gonna actually completely deck this out, and we'll get back to the solar capabilities of this entire system here in a minute. But our electrician came through and installed everything, and he said it was an absolute dream. It's a really nice size panel, especially considering how many breaker sections it has. It all went in pretty easily and actually fixed a couple of problems that we had. This is technically a sub panel. The main panel's on the house. And on a sub panel, you're supposed to separate the grounds and the common. And in that panel, it wasn't. So now that's all been addressed, all done up to code, and it's looking good. Also, we have double pole breakers currently. We might separate those out and just do all singles. We'll get back to that in episode two. So subscribe and stay tuned. We'll definitely get into more of this stuff. This is really early mid-construction sneak peek stuff. But now this is the main panel. Remember in the installation video, there's actually a little section below where all the batteries attach to. Where is that? Well, it comes off a couple of screws. You can separate them, which is brilliant because in the old smart home panel, they were attached right here, which meant one infinity cable, six feet, limited where these batteries could be placed. So six feet is only about you only put it about here. We couldn't put them over here, for example. In the new one, you can run conduit, run the right size wire, and mount this anywhere. So now we have this over here so we can have the batteries all live in this section. And take a look at this. I got to say, this gets the award for the most badass looking battery pack I've ever seen. On top, we have the inverter and below, is the Delta Pro Ultra battery. Okay, so from the EcoFlow Smart Home panel, you have the AC ports. We have three of them, which means up to three inverters. That's the top part of the stack, the real brains of the system. Each inverter can output 7.2 kilowatts at 120 or 240 volt. But if you need more, what I love about these systems is that they're completely modular. Below the inverter is the Delta Pro Ultra battery, good for six kilowatt hours of energy storage. Need more? Well, just buy another Ultra battery and stack it under the inverter. 
the one inverter can take up to five ultra batteries for a total capacity of 30 kilowatt hours. Need even more? Well, add a second inverter, which boosts power output from 7.2 to 14.4 kilowatts and allows up to 60 kilowatt hours of battery storage. Or add that third inverter, which ups the power output to a whopping 21.6 kilowatts and allows for up to 90 kilowatt hours of battery storage. What's really amazing too about these inverters is they have an LRA rating of 120 amps, meaning it can handle the sudden surge of the biggest appliances like a three ton air conditioner and power it up without an issue. Not every battery can do that. The beauty of this kind of a system is that you can add on batteries without having to keep buying new inverters. Each one of these can take up to six batteries and that's probably what we're gonna do. Try to get maybe four to six of these Delta Pro Ultras to this one inverter. And all as you can see, they will just stack on top of each other. Now, right now we're on the dolly rolling wheels so we can move them around as you saw, which kind of makes this kind of like a Delta Pro with the wheels to be portable. But when we go full stack and we do this for real and set everything up permanently, we'll get rid of the dolly and make a permanent base stand for all of this. But let's just take a look at some of the engineering that goes on here. Here on the inverter, for example, look at this, magnetic door latches, everything, latches just like that. When my guys put this battery in, I was about to say, hey, where did you put the doors when you took them off? Don't make sure to lose them. Turns out they've thought of that. You open the door and just recess it. That is fantastic engineering. And what I just opened up here is the high voltage solar input, the high voltage PV. I think this goes into like the 400 volts or so, but this combined with the low voltage PV, which is what the old Delta Pros had on front here, this is 150 volt, 15 amp max. So that is over here, but combined, this can take 5.6 kilowatts, 5,600 watts of solar input. If you remember my old Delta Pros, I had two of those cause that's what you could plug in, could only take 1500 each. So 3000 watts in total. This nearly doubles that. And we're gonna take advantage of that by covering this entire office in solar panels. And that'll feed into this port here and this port back here. Another really clever bit of engineering that I really like, all of these cables have locks on it. This is the release right here. You can push that and this cable can pop off. Well, once you got everything set up, you just turn this and lock it. And now that button, <laughs> it's as solid as a rock. All of the engineering parts in this thing are top, top notch, really impressive. Finishing off back here, these are the battery doors, like we mentioned, the next battery would attach right here. This is a little battery indicator here. So we're putting out 870 watts, which is powering the entire office right now. And as you can see here on the battery, we're completely off grid. We're not pulling anything from the grid. I have the battery set to 20%. When it hits 20%, it'll go into a emergency reserve mode and it'll start pulling from the grid. But once we have that massive solar array up top, I predict we can completely run on sunshine for the entire business, day or night, winter or summer. So up here, we have DC ports like this. This is USB-C. We have two USB-C ports up here. I'll probably not use these just because they're powering the house, but they're there if you were to go camping or something, for example. Over here, we have the USB-A ports as well. All really good weatherproof kind of sealed doors. I like that. The battery power buttons for AC. If you wanted to run AC ports like these up here, these are the 120 volt, 20 amp ports up here. There's one, here's another one. And then you've also got a 120, 30 amp. This is famously like an RV port. RVs, RVs typically have this. You have that and you even have a 120 or 240 volt output port. So you could run bigger appliances off of that directly if you didn't have the entire smart home panel. And over here, there's a little port for a 4G modem that has a little USB input. So we are hardwired in here. If you look over there, you'll see an ethernet port that runs into the panel and that gives us internet hardwired internet, which I'm a big fan of all of my batteries, the main batteries over there, our smart home panels, all that stuff. I always hardwire ethernet. That pretty much shows us all the stuff that we've got going on up here. Like we mentioned from here, we go to the power station, which you could have right next to your smart home panel too, or you can break it out like we did. You can turn on the panels. You can turn on the AC inputs for each one here. You can resume it. So it just pulls from the grid and stops using these or anything else. So this is probably the perfect time to go grab our old Delta Pros 
and plug them in and see what happens. Uh, a little bit of bad news. This is the cable that the Delta Pros used to use. And as you can see, there's a triangle and everything here is very square. And there's a reason. The Delta Pros in the past were 120 volt. So if you wanted the smart home panel to put out 240, you would need two Delta Pros, obviously, right? And it would have a little setting and you can change it. But this supports 240 out the box. So this cable is different now. So I'll talk to EcoFlow and there's probably an adapter you have to get, but the Delta Pros will work with this system and we'll do that in episode two. But that one is the reason why the cables are different. Um, this has just the one line for 120 and this has both legs allowing you to have 240. And also, while we've been talking, the battery just switched over. It hit my reserve point, which is 20%, and it has stopped powering it. And so we're back on the grid now, and the whole house is running back on grid. So that's because I don't have really a lot of solar going into it, but in the future we will. But that shows you that transfer, it was seamless and just really well dialed in. And while we have the app open here, let's talk about some of the settings that you've got. First of all, you can set your electricity rate, and no, this is not a typo. Ours is US dollars and our rate on average is 42 cents. And that is not a typo. That means the savings are gonna be pretty dramatic pretty quickly, right? As you can imagine. Next, there's the outage strategy. So here, this is the circuit priority. And this is a new feature that the Smart Home Panel 2 has that makes it really amazing. This is almost like our span Smart Home Panel. Because what you can do is you can tell it must supply Conditional supply or no supply, meaning if the power were to go out, the grid goes down, it can prioritize the most critical loads. For example, our computer servers would be must supply. I want my computer servers for our business to always be on. Then there's like the lighting in the living room, for example. But then in the no supply, we could put our Mr. Cool DIY heat pump. That system for heating and cooling is obviously nice, but if the power were to go out, we can live without it. We can be a little bit cold, put on an extra sweater, and we could have it set that way. So in episode three, we'll do the final tuning of the entire house and get it all set up. But this isn't just a smart home panel for battery backup. This has the smarts to have smart critical load panel management as well, which is really awesome. I didn't actually know about that. Then you've got StormGuard, which monitors the local national forecasts for like hurricanes coming through, things like that. And if I turn this on, It'll actually monitor for any sort of severe weather condition happening, a cold snap or a hurricane, tornado, whatever, and not power your house, charge this battery to full and be on standby for if the power were to ever go out, all automatically. And then finally, there is the operating mode. And this is kind of where you set what you want. For example, currently I have it on self power, meaning just power the house whenever you can. Now the one exception is the reserve. I have it set to 20%. Now in the future, when I have five or six of these batteries and I have a huge system, I'd probably move that to 50%. Meaning if the power goes out, I would always have 50% in my batteries. Currently, it'll be 20%. The next one is schedule a task where you can have it just power your house at certain times of the day and TOU mode would be optimal for if you wanna maximize savings if you have different energy prices. So typically for most people, four to 9 p.m. is the most expensive. So maybe you wanna just have everything powered from four to 9 p.m and then pull from the grid at midnight when it's really cheap. You can set all that here right down below. For us, because we have two properties, we can't get any kind of a time of use plan. We can't get cheap electricity at midnight. Our prices are always the same. So we have it on self power mode. Then there's a, this here is EPS mode, which is emergency power supply. And if you have it turned on, it can switch over to battery backup in 20 milliseconds. That's really, really good. Pretty much like, you know, as fast as any of the batteries that I've found. And uh, if you don't, it takes about two seconds, it says. So if you predict outages and stuff, I would turn that on. And finally, like we've mentioned before, this can take generator input as well. So like, let's say you have a five day storm and it's cloudy and overcast and your solar can't charge the batteries back up and the power goes out, you would still be all right because you have a, like a natural gas or diesel generator. And you know, EcoFlow, we did, we did a little video about the, uh, the dual fuel smart generator. You can plug one of those in and in the worst case conditions still have power. Now, if you notice the battery that I have for the house, the main house also has that feature for like just double and triple redundancy backup, just in case of the worst, like zombie apocalypse stuff. But it has that also. Finally down here, you can set your units and stuff and the firmware updating is really fast and snappy. This is one thing that I remembered from the old smart home panel too, 
there were two different batteries, a smart home panel, and there was like an order of operations to all of it. This was really smooth. They've clearly learned a lot from doing this for as long as they have. But the firmware, you just hit the button and it updated. And now I'm running the latest, which is good. And it was smooth, didn't fail, worked perfectly. That was fantastic. That pretty much is a look at our initial setup. So what have we done so far? Well, we have swapped out that ugly old service panel that we had here. And then we had the smart home panel off to the side. All that is replaced by this beauty right here. From here, we now have complete backup of all of our loads in this panel. Because this office only had 100 amp or 60 amp service to begin with, we can back up everything and we still have space left over. It's important because we need a new circuit, for example, to run lighting in here. We have outlets and stuff. We'll eventually, you know, have batteries charging in here, for example, like little hand tools and stuff. And we need lighting in here and all that stuff will be one new circuit. The second new circuit we'll already need is a heat pump water heater, which we think will go around here, I think, uh, or in the corner. We're not really sure just yet. Sound off in the comments if you have any ideas and stuff. Currently, like we mentioned, it's just all wrong. We gotta do a lot of new plumbing and change all that and fix it. And with our system, we have the one inverter, which means 7.2 kilowatts of output, which will be more than enough for everything that we do in here. You know we're building a net zero house, net zero building, which means all heat pumps, lower power consumption, water tanks, no instant stuff. We're gonna be just fine. And currently we have roughly six kilowatt hours of energy storage, but we're going to stack that up in episode two or three, we'll see, all the way up to around 30 to 40 kilowatt hours. And I believe with the 5.6 kilowatts of solar input, plus about 35 to 40 kilowatt hours of battery storage, we can run this business entirely on sunshine and be net zero, which is always my dream. And it hasn't been easy and we are not done. And there's gonna be a ton left to do. As you can see, there's still siding and frame, uh, finishing up here, solar installation. Episodes two and three should cover all of it and we will do all that. This is a really quick first look. By the time you guys get your hands on this, the software will be ready for you. It'll be ready to rock. And this thing is freaking amazing. Bravo EcoFlow. Love that you guys have taken so much of the feedback and I love seeing all this R&D and bringing all of this together in such an amazing little package. I think for many, many people, this will make a ton of sense. So that was a really quick sneak peek at our brand new EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra Battery Inverter and the Smart Home Panel 2. This is the next gen stuff. This is absolutely amazing. I can't wait to show more with you and finally, get this place net zero. So until next week, check out this video. And until next time, I'm Rico Tua Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.